Well, hello everyone. My name is Ken and this is Northern Viking Explorer. And today I'm going to share with you 10 awesome things to do when visiting Banff and Lake Louise in the summer. Banff and Lake Louise are located in Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada, nestled in the Rocky Mountains. It's such a beautiful place to visit. So these 10 awesome stops in Banff and Lake Louise are in no particular order other than the fact that my favorite one is the last one. So you'll have to stick around to find out which one that is. Most of these stops are free, a couple of them are paid for, but all of them do require you to have the Banff National Park Pass. I'll put a link below in the description so you can find out the cost of that. And some of them do have paid parking as well, so that's something to be aware of. Now I will have links to all of these stops below in the description. Now I can't possibly cover every awesome thing to do in Banff and Lake Louise, so I'm sure there's more out there. If you have some ideas, make sure to leave those in the comments below. But let's go ahead and dive right into the 10 awesome things to do in Banff and Lake Louise. So the first stop on our list is to actually visit Lake Louise itself. If you haven't seen pictures of Lake Louise before, it's a beautiful turquoise colored lake nestled in the Rocky Mountains. It's about 45 minutes from Banff itself and it's at an elevation of 1600 meters. As for parking, it is paid parking at the top. It's free to go look at the lake, but it is paid for parking at the top. If you're willing to hike, there is some free parking further down. They also run shuttles down from the highway up to Lake Louise as well. It does get very busy there in the summer. While you're up there, you can stop in the Fairmont Chateau, Lake Louise, maybe grab some lunch in there. Absolutely beautiful hotel overlooking the lake. There's also some shops and different souvenir shops and different things in there. The other thing is you can do some hiking while you're up there, go hike around the lake. You can take a selfie. It is absolutely amazing. You've probably seen selfies online from Lake Louise, as well as you can go canoeing up there. Um, so much to do, beautiful stop. It is a must stop if you're headed to this area. So number two on our list is to actually go explore downtown Banff. There's a good chance you're already staying in this area because many of the hotels are right in this area. There's also a visitor center down there if you wanna find more information on Banff. Now, while you're down there, this is a great place to go for your meals. There's tons of restaurants. Some of our favorites are down there. The keg, if you like to go for steaks, or there's also the old spaghetti factory if you're down there with a family. But you can also do shopping while you're in downtown Banff. All the souvenir shops are down there. You can get all sorts of winter clothing or summer clothing, Halle Henson outfits, all sorts of stuff. There's small department stores and of course candy stores, chocolate shops, as well as Beaver Tales, which is one of our favorites. So make sure you head on down to downtown Banff. It has a similar experience to visiting the Whistler Village, but this is downtown Banff and it's awesome to visit. So number three on our list is to go visit the Bankhead ghost town in Lower Bankhead. Now Lower Bankhead is located right outside of Banff, not too far actually, between Banff and Lake Minnewanka. And this was an early 1900s coal mine that there's remnants of there. So it shut down in 1922. In this area, you're gonna find all sorts of buildings and foundations you can walk on and climb through, as well as there's an old coal train there that you can go climb on, a small coal, coal train that your kids will love. It's super cool in there. One thing I should say, this is in the wildlife, so just be wary of animals that are out there. There are bears in this area, so you may want to pick up some bear spray if you're going to be walking through here. Lots of wildlife. We even saw a fox while we were walking through here. So super cool place to visit, the Bankhead Ghost Town. So number four on our list is to go ride the Banff gondola into the mountains. It's absolutely gorgeous. It sits about 10 minutes or five kilometers outside of downtown Banff. And this is a paid attraction. There's parking up there, but you do need to pay to ride the gondola. At the base of the gondola, there is a Starbucks. This is the highest Starbucks in Canada. So if you wanna check that out, there's also a souvenir shop. Now, when you're riding the gondola up the mountain, you're gonna find amazing views all around you it's absolutely gorgeous when you get to the top there's an observation area with restaurants coffee shops souvenir shops it's absolutely stunning up there you'll be able to take all your photos kind of 360 degree views from up there you can see downtown banff you can see the golf courses mount norquay all down the valleys it's stunning up there then when you're up there if you've gone for lunch or dinner you can do that but then you can go for a hike or a walk along along the Sulphur Mountain Boardwalk, which will take you up to another viewpoint 
It's absolutely stunning from there. Again, 360 degree views. It's definitely worth the short hike to get those views. A ton of fun, and you're not gonna wanna miss out on the Banff Gondola. So number five on our list is the Cave and Basin National Historic Site. There's actually quite a few things to do here. We're only gonna go over a couple of them. So on the free side, there's actually a hike you can do here that takes you down to the marsh. And then there's a boardwalk that goes out into the marsh. This is a great place for bird watching or animal viewing. There's even a platform out there that's protective so the animals don't really see you. It's kind of a cool place to go for kind of, kind of a family hike. It's not very steep and it's quite easy to get out there. The other things that are there, and these are paid for, would be the lantern tours. You can do that where you walk through tunnels, as well as the Banff Upper Hot Springs is up there. And this is Canada's highest elevation operational hot spring. So you can check that out while you're there as well. And those are both paid for attractions. So I hope this video is giving you value so far. If it is, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Now we did do a whole vlog series, a three day vlog series, of our trip to Banff and Lake Louise. If you are interested in that, I will have it linked below in the description for you to watch after this video. Let's move on to number six. So number six on our list is to visit the Bow River Falls. It's right near downtown, it is free to visit, and it's right near the Fairmont Banff Springs. So if you're looking for it, head on up towards the Fairmont Banff Springs and you'll hang a left before you get there, but it's right in that area. When you get there, again, this is free of charge to visit. You've got some beautiful outlooks of the falls, right down the river, the Bow River there. You can even um, go further down and do some whitewater rafting if that's something you're interested in. There is a whitewater rafting area there, but there's gorgeous views. It's worth checking out and it's right near Banff, so it's really quite easy to get to. Now, number seven on my list is to visit the Johnson Canyon. This was definitely one of my favorite stops on our trip. It's located about halfway between Banff and Lake Louise. Now, if you are doing camping on your trip, this might be a great place for you to go camping because there were some campgrounds in this area. They've got a parking lot. So this would be mostly if you're interested in hiking, Johnson Canyon is a great hike with absolutely gorgeous views of the Johnson Canyon. So when you get there, there is a little area where there's a small restaurant, a little souvenir and snack shop. You can grab a coffee, that sort of thing at the base of it. Now, as you're hiking, there are three different hikes, but you don't have to pick one. There are in a row. So you can hike to the lower falls and then continue on to the upper falls and then continue on again to the ink pot. So the lower falls is about 1.1 kilometers or 30 minutes. The upper falls is about 2.6 kilometers or one hour. And the ink pots is about 5.6 kilometers and two to three hours. So the lower falls, absolutely stunning. If you only have time to go to the lower falls, it is gorgeous. There's a little lookout platform of the falls as well as there's a little tunnel. You go through the mountain and you get a close up view of the falls. Now the walkways up to this area, they stick out off the side of the mountain over the river. So you walk along these platforms along the edge. You have to go under rocks and boulders and they stick out. It is really cool, a really great place to check out. Going up to the upper falls, there's a little bit more of that to the upper falls and another gorgeous lookout. We only went to the upper falls. So if you've been to the ink pots, I'd love to hear about it, what that looked like. You can leave that in the comment section below. But Johnson Canyon is definitely a must stop if you're headed to Banff and Lake Louise. So number eight on our list is the Mount Norquay Lookout. We were told by locals this is the best free lookout that you can drive to in the Banff area. It's located about six and a half kilometers or a 10 to 15 minute drive right outside of Banff. It is quite a windy road to get up there. You're heading up to the ski area and you'll find an open area with a parking lot and you can walk out there and check out the views of downtown Banff, all the mountains. It was really spectacular out there. And if you're lucky enough like us, you might have a herd of sheep run by, which was totally awesome. So number nine on our list is to go visit Lake Minnewanka. Lake Minnewanka, the drive there is a loop drive. A lot of people come here to look for animals or spot animals on the side of the road. So it's a great place to do that. Now, if you're already headed to the Bankhead Ghost Town, you're already about halfway to Lake Minnewanka. So just continue on up the road. It is free of charge to visit and transit does come up here as well. So if you don't have a vehicle, you can take transit 
up to Lake Minnewanka. Now, this area does have some paid options as well. You can do a lake cruise up here, which is paid for. You can rent boats or canoes. Or if you wanna do some free stuff, grab a lunch and bring it up there and maybe do some hiking. Lake Minnewanka was absolutely gorgeous. Go sit out there and enjoy the views. Maybe bring a lawn chair if you have one and go hang out by the lake. So we've reached our final awesome thing to do in Banff and Lake Louise. And again, this is my favorite thing that we did on our trip. So number 10 is visiting Moraine Lake. What a great stop Moraine Lake is. If you haven't heard of Moraine Lake before, you've probably seen pictures of it because it's famous where people will go there and take their Instagram photos or Instagram selfies of Moraine Lake. It's also famous from Canadian photographer Peter McKinnon who did his bucket list shot there as well as they put his photo on a coin here in Canada. So Moraine Lake. Now to get there, it's about 11 kilometers up the road from Lake Louise Drive. So a lot of people when they visit Lake Louise will go to Moraine Lake after. It's very popular so they do shut the road off when it's full and then they'll let cars through. So you might need to circle around a few times before they'll let you up there like they did with us. So definitely worth the trek up to Moraine Lake. When you get there, it's a gorgeous turquoise colored lake. You can do hiking down the side of the lake there. You might see wildlife. We saw a deer while we were up there. Take your time, go for a stroll up the paths. There's a place where you can go for a coffee. You can get some snacks and souvenirs while you're up there. Now there's also something called the rock pile that's there. So it's a big pile of rocks and there's the rock pile hike or the rock pile trail that takes you up there. A ton of steps to get up there, but it's definitely worth the hike to go up there because this is where you're gonna get the amazing views and the selfie shots that you might be looking for. So go up to the rock pile, get some awesome views up there. There was also some people getting engaged while we were up there. So it's very romantic up there as well. Head on up to rock pile and take your photos up there. You will not be disappointed. And again, this is Moraine Lake just outside of Lake Louise. So those are my 10 awesome things to do when visiting Banff and Lake Louise in the summer. If you did like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you've got some great ideas of things to do in Banff National Park, I'd love to hear about them in the comments section below. And remember, I've also got a full vlog series of our trip to this area. Make sure to check those out in the description. Thank you so much for watching today. Remember to subscribe here on YouTube. And until next time, take care.